What's up my producer friends, it's David with another MonsterProductions.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about the Fruity Stereo Shaper. So let's just get straight into it. So the Fruity Stereo Shaper is a stock FL Studio plugin that comes with all editions of FL Studio. Personally, this has been one of my main go-to plugins for stereo effects. How you would load it up is by adding it onto something in your mixer. So in this case, I have a little loop that I created, which I've already rooted to my mixer, and I'm gonna go to slot one, and I'm just gonna add the Fruity Stereo Shaper on it. So this is our Fruity Stereo Shaper. By default, it looks like this. It's a pretty simple plugin as far as looks, but it can do a lot of stuff. So as you can see, we have our mixer matrix here. We're gonna go over this in just a second. And then we have a couple effects knobs and we have an in out difference area here. So we'll talk about all these different things. First things first, if you go up to the top, we do have a little drop down menu and we have some presets, which you can scroll through and look and kind of get an idea as to everything that this plugin does. So it may be a good idea to experiment with some of the presets just to get an idea of some of the cool things that you can achieve with this plugin. Personally, I use these three stereoize options a lot. You can get some pretty cool stuff, but I mean, it's really just two knobs that we're messing with with the effects here anyway. So you could achieve the same sound very quickly. Next to that little drop down menu, we do have our settings icon, which will give us these options here. And then of course we can scroll through presets with these as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mixer matrix. So when I first started using this plugin, this mixer matrix was a little bit confusing, even though there's only four faders, it was still a little weird for me at first, but it's really not that hard to understand. These two faders have to do with the left speaker, as you can see down here, and these two faders have to do with the right speaker. So these two in the middle, which you can see the volume's turned up, uh, right now the volume is at zero decibels for them, and this one is essentially just the left channel volume. This one here is the right channel volume. And as you can see, this little sort of matrix shows that uh, the right channel is going to this one over here. So this is the right into the left channel volume. So basically it's taking the signal that you would hear from the right channel and turning it up into the left channel and then vice versa. So this is the opposite. This would be the left into the right channel volume. So let me demonstrate how all this works. First of all, let's go ahead and take a listen to what I have right now. So just a little lo-fi loop that I created. Now I can turn down the left channel volume and then it's only playing in the right speaker or I could bring up the right channel into the left channel volume to give it sort of a panning effect. So now it sounds like we just panned it a little bit to the left speaker. Now obviously I could do the same thing on this side. So then it sounds like we're panned on the right speaker. When I bring these faders down to the middle, it's turning the volume completely off. Nothing coming out. Now, what I usually use this plugin for is its effects. As you can see up here, we have a pre and a post knob. This has to do with the mixer matrix. So if I click pre, it's essentially adding whatever effect we add to it before it goes through the mixer signal. And then post, it's adding it after the mixer signal. Now the delay is essentially giving us a Haas effect with just being able to slide this slightly. So let's take a listen. So what it's actually doing is it's delaying the signal. If I bring it all the way over here, you can hear that's like a super delay there. Or if I bring it over here, it's the left side. And so let me show you actually what the Haas effect is real quick, if you don't know. So this is a common technique that engineers will often use, especially on like guitars and stuff like that. But any instrument where you want to get this sort of super wide stereo effect. So what they'll do, they'll take something like the sample. We're gonna go into our channel settings. I'm gonna bring the panning all the way to the left. So now it's only coming out of the left speaker. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one here and we're gonna make this one unique. And then I'm going to turn this one all the way to the right. So the next step would be to actually go in here and move this slightly off like this. And we could go even more. 
So that's the Haas effect, and you can do that really easily with this Stereo Shaper plugin. And just something to kind of note is if you are going to be using this plugin, it can be a good idea to keep an eye on your correlation meter. This is going to tell you if something is mono compatible or not. So the Haas effect and messing with the phase can kind of really mess with the mono compatibility of something. So it's good to know about this and keep this in mind. I do have videos where I've talked about this in the past. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of the video and on the screen now if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that. But anyway, I want to illustrate this. As you can see now, our correlation meter is fully compatible with mono. Uh, if it moves over into the negatives, that's when we have some phasing issues or it's not as mono compatible. So let's kind of bring this over here. So you can see it's really messing with the mono compatibility. So in the context of this particular clip, what the phase is going to do is it's going to sort of change the color of the sound. So first let me demonstrate what it's actually going to sound like. So hopefully you can kind of hear the slight shift in sort of color of the, the sound when I'm changing the phase there. It's pretty subtle, so it might be hard to hear depending on what speakers you're listening to. But let me show you a visual of what's actually happening here. So I have a saw wave. You can see the sawtooth shape on this analyzer. And if I change the phase, it's going to change the shape. So. So that gives you a little bit more of a visual representation of what's kind of happening there. And you can also hear a little bit better of the sort of change in tone, which is what I'm talking about with the color. So another cool thing that we can do with this plugin is mid-side processing. And what this allows us to do is actually process the side signal separately than what's happening in mono. One thing that I sort of failed to mention when I was talking about the mixer matrix before is that we can actually bring stuff to mono and just have the mid signal playing. So how I would go about doing that is uh, let's just bring this down to negative six decibels and then I'll bring this up to negative six decibels and then I can play it. And so that's the mono signal. And just to double check it, this is our stereo separation knob. And as you can hear, it sounds the exact same. We're not really hearing or seeing any change. So for now, I'm going to bring this back to zero and I'm going to show you how you can do some mid side processing. So what I want to do is on my mixer, make sure we have this highlighted, whatever instrument or sound you have the fruity stereo shaper on. And I want to right click this, just the free mixer track that's next to it. And I'm going to click side chain to this track. And now I want to go up here to the in out difference and I'm going to put this on two. So now I can bring this down. Let me bring this back up to zero. As you can see, only the left speaker is playing on this one and only the right speaker is playing on this one. So if I wanted to, I could process the left signal separately from the right signal, just like this, or I could bring this back to negative uh, six. Let's go to negative six. Let's bring this to negative six and bring this to negative six, and then. So now I have my mid signal and my stereo or side signal. And you can really hear this. This is the side signal. And, and this is the mid. So now if I only want to process the mid signal, I just highlight this and add whatever effects I want into it. Let's say some EQ. I can EQ it, I can compress it, I could add any effects that I want just to the mid signal, or I could come in here to my side signal, I could add whatever I wanted to get creative and process just the side signal.
Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's going to let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.